Hi, how are you? I'm <laughs> fine, thank you. How are you? Very well. I yeah. see you have a beautiful T-shirt. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> Courtesy please? of eternity. <laughs> Can you please yeah. present yourself and tell me what you do? All right, so my name is um, Asimwe Benson Mugisha. I'm a Ugandan by nationality. And I'm running a business in Kenya. So I'm the CEO and founder of RideSafe. Of RideSafe? Yeah. What do RideSafe do? So RideSafe is an emergency response service uh, tailor made for motorcycle taxi. Yeah, I realized. Um, <laughs> yeah, here this concept is yeah. a little bit uh, <laughs> yeah, people hard know. to comprehend. Yeah, they don't <laughs> comprehend. So, How did you get involved with this? Yeah, so uh, I used to work at a medical center. I'm not a, <laughs> a medic, <laughs> but uh, I was in the administrative bit. Yeah, so we used to get this challenge every time we see when the motorcycle drivers, when they come to uh, our centers, our medical centers, and uh, number one, they never had money on them. Number two, uh, you can see no first response has been delivered, maybe because there was delay in time. Uh, number three, there is uh, a lot of uh, push and pull on who was responsible for the <laughs> accident. Yeah. And um, over time, we, are, we, we see the number is only growing bigger and bigger. And so the recklessness is there because barrier to entry is, to entry is almost zero. Uh, anyone, if you can ride a bike, you can do it for business as well. So it's a very common for So it's very common, yeah, like, and having yeah, accidents. And, having accidents and uh, the sad bit is the solution on how to reduce intervention time to either save the person or if not maybe uh, save life or further damage. So this we saw was a challenge and for us uh, with, uh, on the medical side on the administrative and finance you know you wouldn't want it's different uh, first aid in uh, the developed countries is compulsory but in countries like Kenya you need to have money first, even if you're bleeding. If you're not going to prove a way of payment, you will bleed out. <laughs> so, so it gets really tricky. And yes. so we thought, we thought, you know, let's build, let's start with something. Ideally, right self has evolved, but ideally it was, let's just start with how it's easiest way to help this person to get to our medical center quickly. And after that, uh, how can they pay for their care? Yeah, so yeah. Which basically. would make sense. First you leave, <laughs> then you... You know, then, yeah, payment. yeah, something like that, yes. yeah. Yeah, cool. Um, what is the biggest obstacle in your work? What do you find as the most difficult thing to overcome? Maybe just uh, people accepting the tech. So ideally, we want to leverage on technology. There is already the existing processes which are there, which is, uh, you know, you get into an accident and the first thing you do, maybe people call an ambulance, which uh, average response time is about uh, 30 to 40 minutes. So I'm imagining someone bleeding out and uh, you're telling you 30 to 40 minutes for an ambulance to reach. Yeah. So uh, now we're trying to onboard first responders, networking with uh, small centers all over around uh, the city and uh, hoping that uh, these centers can, you know, uh, use this technology, you know, the, the, the tech, is they find it complicated. If you put, tell them to download this application and respond to incidents, they'd be like, ah, how much are you paying me to even first download the application on my phone? So if you think about all these barriers, so uh, the tech really would have been the biggest challenge. Yeah, but then that's the main thing. We're yeah. coming to disrupt using the technology. So yes. we hope uh, it could work out later on. And... Um, um, why do you think this is important, like f the yeah. area that you try to disrupt with blockchain? Why do you think that this is important? Yeah, so it's uh, very important. So the emergency response, like I've told you earlier on, the remote way is uh, you call the ambulances that they have to come. and uh, But still, even if they came, you didn't guarantee the quality that your customer, or maybe the user of your platform, you can't guarantee the quality. It's still up to the humans to make the decision yes. on how they'll deliver it. Uh, so that was gap one. Uh, Gap two was um, we thought, okay, how do we help these people? Okay, it's it's one thing solving the issue, but you know maybe you could avoid the issue from happening at yes, the first place. Yeah, yeah, so we so that was a gap two. So for gap one, blockchain came in uh, through smart contracts, and we thought, hey, so what if the rider, the driver of the motorbike, and the first responder were somehow on a smart contract, and uh, for the for the for the first responder to get paid for their service, they have to meet some specific deliverables, you see. And so maybe this can be written in a smart contract so that then we can be sure that if someone got into an accident, you will do an x-ray, you will give them a start dose, and you know, you will put a bandage on it. Yeah. You just have to tell us the type of injury first, you see. And then that's, that's good enough for us. So we saw blockchain helping a lot because it's no longer a human deciding, but there is a system 
that has been set up. And for um, avoidance, we thought of incentives. So what if we incentivized the rider on his behaviors and incentivize the first responder on their behavior? So for example, if you have a reduced intervention time, you're entitled to an incentive, mm -hmm. you see? So if I responded in five minutes and next time in two minutes, you get an incentive for that. Maybe next time you'll want to, you know, yes. respond faster. And for the rider, if you've gone two years without any accident, you know, you need to be incentivized because then you see you're showing an exemplary behavior on the platform. Yes. So we so this could be a way maybe you could encourage the riders to, to be drive careful, better yes. and the first responder to respond faster. Yes. So and that was really amazing for us. So we see a lot of ways how blockchain comes in. And on top of that, just if I can yes, add briefly, so uh, the idea is building an ecosystem. So even if people are getting the incentives, we want them to also build the incentives to work on those incentives within themselves. So if I'm incentivized for good riding and you're being incentivized for fast response, uh, maybe you need my service and maybe I need your service. And I know both of them need services from each other at one point in time. He's a right driver, motorcycle driver, he will carry parcels to the first responder at one yeah. point in time. Mm -hmm. And I have children, I'm a rider, I will want to take my children to the same first responder, but now under medical, other medical issues. So what if I could pay using the incentives, because after all, you know the value of the incentive. And what if you could pay me for my ride using the incentive, because you know the value of the incentive, and that could be our token, maybe an, an AE token, you see. So we saw a lot of ways we can build an economy around that as well, yeah, to just build basically an economy based on trust, yeah. I see. Mm. Actually, great idea. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, and uh, speaking yeah. of uh, um, this, I would like to ask you about what is your prediction for next year? What do you see as uh, the, the development of uh, blockchain in 2020? Development of blockchain in 2020. So the tokens, the cryptocurrencies, they are growing. Everyone's coming up with the token and this, something like that. And that bubble, I feel like it's almost bursting. Uh, but there's one thing that I've seen that's coming up, and last this first phase of this year has been something very great. Uh, people have been talking about it so much. This is trust. And uh, I'd like just talk about uh, Jason from Utu, yeah, part of the our staff fleet members. And the trust economy is growing. And the next thing I'm seeing blockchain standing into is, is a trust economy. And that's why I feel like uh, even us as we're building these incentives, we want them, because if imagine that I'm... Um, paying you in incentive, you're paying me in token, I'm paying you in token, and we're earning this token through good behavior. So by behaving well, I'm earning, and at the same time, I can use it to share it with, you know, build your business. Yeah. So there's something to do with trust that's growing. To me, blockchain is coming to grow. I know it's becoming decentralized, but the only way it's going to be decentralized is if people trust each other. Exactly. Like currently, it's how, core. yeah, it's yes. a core. How do I, 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 I trade in Bitcoin, right? Sometimes I, I buy Bitcoins, I keep, then I see they're going down, I sell them quickly. <laughs> but then the thing is, for me to even make that transaction, my first bold step, I was sweating when I bought my first Bitcoins because this guy is telling me send money in this account. <laughs> and in my hand, I'm like, so what happens if I send and he didn't send the Bitcoins? You know, but then right now I can quickly buy a Bitcoin because of the trust I built with the people who I trade with. Yeah. Strangers, but I've never met them. All this just comes down to trust. And I feel like the trust economy is going to grow and there will be many applications will come up. They'll be building on trust to on the blockchain. Yeah. yeah. So the I feel like that you don't know. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned Jason and the Starfleet teams. They're yeah. all gathered here uh, today and uh, yeah. tomorrow yeah. as well. Exciting. Uh, which is um, what was uh, the presentation that um, impact uh, that had a biggest impact on you? What did you like the most? The first one was uh, Pablo, uh, the ambassador from. Uh, uh, the ambassador of uh, Eternity Latin Americas, America, yeah. Latin America. Uh, when he talked about th there's the political party that is using blockchain to uh, make decisions. So, like, uh, if I'm a, an, a, a minister or an MP in the party, or maybe a, a valuable person in the party, and they want to, like, make a decision, for example, on the constitution and things like this, within the party itself, uh, they put it on the blockchain, and then people vote. You know, you maybe use tokens to vote or something like this, and then the final decision that will be made in the parliament according to that party will be through this kind of decentralized uh, decision that people have made. Mm -hmm. um, that really touched me because I, I come from uh, Kenya and I know the challenges with politics. I see the challenges that we're having with <laughs> elections and everything like this. And I feel like if this, let it start at a party level and if it can grow into the, country, the whole country, it will be amazing because now, now you're giving power back to the yeah. people. 
Amazing. So the second one quickly is, um, I've just come from one actually, uh, they're talking about legal, and they were talking about how they can turn um, smart contracts into real binding contracts, and the process they have gone through to be able to interpret a, a written contract and putting into Sophia, that has been, those are, those are today, those are my two takeouts. <laughs> <Great>. <laughs> I think it'll be really awesome. Yes, well, governance is actually one of the very important things that yeah. blockchain can really resolve. And, yeah. um, and especially governance and fraternity is quite an interesting topic. Yeah. And of course, the legal side of the things. Yeah. Um, do you sometimes preach blockchain to your friends and how do they respond to this? Yeah, so, uh, so whenever I mention uh, blockchain to a friend, the first thing they would say is uh, Bitcoin. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, oh, those yeah, Bitcoin yeah, things. Eh? Yeah, 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 the Bitcoins. Yeah, I know that. <laughs> yeah, but then uh, uh, blockchain is still so young. Uh, I'll, I'll just give a quick uh, example, just a detour. Of when I, before I came to Prague, I had to go get a visa. And uh, so the visa office, the consulate for Czech Republic, uh, they asked me, so why? the interview, mm -hmm. so why are you going to Prague? And I said, so there's this conference I'm, I've been invited to, uh, yeah, Eternity Ventures, well. so, so what is this conference about? And I said, it's a, it's a blockchain conference. Yeah. So what is blockchain? <laughs> I was like, okay. Yeah, so, 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 it, it, so it made me know that it, I, I shouldn't be so complicated in explaining. Yeah. So I just told them, have you heard of Bitcoin? Like, oh, Bitcoin, those uh, internet money. I said, yes, that. Have you heard of that? Yeah. So blockchain is the platform that Bitcoin runs on. But this time, the conference is not about the Bitcoin itself, but it's about the platform <laughs> and other use cases for the platform, you know? And they're like, oh, I think I get, but anyway, come for your visa. You, he, he didn't want to ask any more questions. <laughs> he said, come for a visa. I think it will be more complicated if I wait here. <laughs> you see? So I try, I try. I talk to them. The first thing that comes in their head is Bitcoin, but then um, the space is growing fast. In Kenya, I can buy... Uh, you can buy bitcoins right now, the crypto exchanges, yeah, and pay and pay with. Uh, how is the adoption? It, it, it's it's quite smooth on the side of uh, trading, because uh, bitcoin you can buy and sell now using M-Pesa. M-Pesa the mobile goes money very well that goes very well. Most, yeah, yes. I know it's it's smooth, but then now uh, there's a task force that has just been set up, and uh, we hope they are going to fight for uh, blockchain rights in the country and more use cases as well. But then it's growing slowly. Awareness is coming and it's coming fast. Uh, I'm sure. Worst case scenario. Four years time, there will be good adoption in Kenya. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean oh, like because yes, uh, there's housing, people yes. are going into housing, yes. they're going to different you, insurance. They are embracing. Just yesterday, I because I was here, I missed a conference. I was invited. Right, if we were invited to go and talk about um, our, our solution because some insurance companies want to partner with us to uh, help them with their side of uh, claims processes. So I was I was seeing a lot of people are picking interest, eyes are opening. So I think in four years time we'll start seeing like positive, massive results. So in our Kenya. aim is to just help them open their eyes. Yeah, it's just help, help them open their it. eyes and keep talking about this blockchain and the changes it's bringing and the decentralized the decentralization that is, is happening. It, it's amazing. I feel like uh, it's the next big step, and yes. we are on track. Yes. Well, yeah. Thank you, Benson. Yeah. It was a pleasure. <laughs> I appreciate. Thank you, you very much. Yeah.